What's up, my warriors? How's everything going? Mr. Stanger here in your Weber High gear. Uh, we're going to talk today about Chapter 6 a little bit. Now, Chapter 6 has to deal with promotion. Um, you've learned before a little bit about the four Ps of marketing, uh, and promotion was one of those, right? Now, we're going to delve into each one of those a little bit deeper. You'll notice that we've been doing that already, um, but promotion is the one for today. Now, promotion is the idea that in order to get people to buy ourselves or to buy our stuff, sometimes they need a little bit of convincing. Now, we do things in order to get people to buy our stuffs by usually one of four different activities. Now, those create what's known as the promotional mix. The promotional mix is made up of four distinct different types of activities. And when put together, you create what's known as a promotional plan. A promotional plan is pretty much just talking about a few different things with promotion. Now, a promotional plan deals with you having objectives uh, of a promotion and the different activities that it takes to actually get there. So one of your promotional plan goals might be to make more sales. And in order to make more sales, you're going to lay out the different kinds of promotion that you're going to use to get to that point. You're like, eh, it kind of makes sense, right? We'll talk a little bit about that more later. Let's go into what the promotional mix actually is. And the way that I like to explain the promotional mix is by using something called Promotion Man. Uh, promotion Man has one superhero and it's to let, or one superpower, it's to let everybody know about promotion. Now, the way that we like to draw Promotion Man is something like this. Now, Promotion Man won't be on a test, but it's just an easy way to help you remember all the different things about promotion. He looks a little like this. He's got a guy coming up here, and he's got a big megaphone that comes out. He's got one, two, three big things of sound coming out. He's got a hand coming over here and five fingers reaching out. I think that's five. Don't judge my drawing. And he likes to ride horses, so he's a little bow-legged right here. And his name's Promotion Man. He's so happy because he lets everybody know about all these great things that he's a happy camper. Now, the first thing that I want to talk to you about, and this is super easy to remember because we talked about it a little bit with the four P's of marketing. There are three main goals of promotion to inform, persuade, and remind. We know that promotion is any form of communication that informs, persuades, or reminds someone about a good or service. Now, we know from here that that's also the goals of promotion, is to let people know about our stuff. There's four main kinds of promotion that help us do that. The two that are most common, or the feet that promotion stands on, are advertising, Look at that purple marker. That looks good right there. Advertising and sales promotion. I'm going to write promo just because I don't want to write it all. If you'd like to write promotion, feel free to. Uh, but this should go in your notes. Hopefully it helps you a little bit. Um, the big thing about these that makes them super big and super important and what promotion stands are, are these are one to many. Meaning that I can create one thing and get it to all sorts of people, right? It means that I could actually make an advertisement and actually get it to thousands and thousands, millions, uh, maybe even billions of people. It's super easy. The other reason that these two are both feet is sometimes they're used together. And as we walk, we use both feet together and make it all happy camper-like, okay? 
Now we're going to focus on advertising. There's different kinds of advertisement all over the place. You could think of it as TV, radio, print, social media. This is a paid form of promotion that attempts to get people to come into your store your or your uh, place of work. Why am I not thinking? Uh, or to buy your goods or services online or wherever you want them to. Now, you have all probably seen a type of advertisement today, whether it was you were scrolling through social media and someone tried to sell you something, whether it was you were driving down the street and you saw a billboard, or maybe you read the newspaper, because some people still do, and you saw a print ad that was like, come buy our stuff. The whole goal of advertising is to get you somewhere and to buy it. Sales promotion does the same kind of thing, and oftentimes it's paired with advertising. Sales promotion uses terms like BOGO or 50% off or going out of business. It can also be something as simple as a loyalty program. Sales promotions could be that you actually have a punch card and you're thinking to yourself, man, I want to go to Cafe Rio today because I know if I get one more punch, I get a free steak salad. It's going to be the best day of my life. And their loyalty program actually gets you to go into the store. It might be that. Uh, it's that Bath and Body Works sale that you know if you buy one soap, you get another one for free. Or maybe it's the Nike outlet that's like all shoes that are uh, purple today or 50% off. And you're like, my jam, I'm going to go there. They're giving you with sales promotion an incentive to shop with them. Other things, some people actually use Something like a sales promotion is their entire marketing aspect or their entire marketing campaign. Um, on Riverdale Road, just here in Ogden, uh, if you're driving on Riverdale Road, you go over the freeway and on the north hand side, there's something called like Crown Bedroom. It's been called like Knight's Furniture or a bunch of different things. And they always have that little mannequin that sits out here like this and it says going out of business. And people stop all the time there because they're like, Man, they've got to have great sales. They're going out of business. And their whole marketing plan is just to get you there because they're like, man, if people think we're going out of business, they're always going to be here. There's other companies. Gordman's in Ogden or Riverdale has been going out of business for four years. Like I legit, every time I go in there, they're like, we're going out of business. I'm like, oh yeah, really? That's great. I think they actually are this time, but who knows? Maybe they aren't. Um, so these two paired together get from one to many people. It's one action that gets to a ton of different people. And when used together, they are what promotion stands on. They are used all the time. The next one that I want to talk to is the elbow. We call it the elbow because it's reactive. And the type of promotion is called public relations public relations it's reactive think of it as like you're swatting a fly your elbow is what allows you to swing out at that fly it buzzes around and you react to it and you go out and you smack it the same idea comes with public relations now public relations is stuff that you don't pay for public relations is the idea that the area surrounding you or the community around you views you in certain ways and opinions. And your goal is to make it so that you have the right kind of uh, PR or public relations to make them think good of you. Now you can do different activities to make your public relations look better, but there's also different kinds of public relations that look bad. Now, publicity is also something that deals with this. The act of public relations or publicity uh, is there. And there's some people that say there's no such thing as bad publicity because it's free marketing. You could argue that, 
And in fact, there's been people that have seen bad publicity completely shut down their company. Think about Papa John's a little bit ago. People got mad about what he said on Twitter or what he said on social media, or I think they might've even recorded him saying it. And people were like, dude, that's not okay. And eventually the board of trustees chased him out and they made him sell his company to someone else. It made it so that he was no longer the right person for the job. Then there's other people who use publicity just to get in the news and it keeps people thinking about them. Um, I don't talk politics. You know that I don't because I'm a teacher. But one of the things that Donald Trump has done as a president is he's used publicity, whether good or bad, for his benefit. Whether he's doing something good or bad based on your opinion, he's always in the news. You're always talking about him. And he did that when he ran for president in the first place as well. No matter what it was about, you were always thinking about him. His name was always in your head. And so I'm not saying good or bad because I don't talk politics with you guys, but public relations wise, he showed the fact that sometimes there isn't necessarily bad publicity. Sometimes it's just keeping his brain or keeping you or the idea in your brain. Sorry, my brain's not working correctly. So uh, I apologize for that. The last one right here is personal selling. The idea of personal selling is one to one. That's a colon, I promise. One to one. I'm going out. I'm actually shaking people's hands. I'm saying, how, hi, hi, how are you? How can I help you? Let me solve your needs and wants and let me sell you this great thing. It's a perfect, perfect, perfect way to actually get people to know about your product or your service. Now, things to know about personal selling. It is the most expensive form of promotion. Whoa, expensive. I can spell sometimes. It's the most expensive form. You guys are like, how does that work? Because advertising, think about Super Bowl commercials. They cost, what, like $50 million for 30 seconds? And they reach like... 500 million or I don't even know how many they they reach but a crap ton of people let's be honest and you're like how does that make sense when they pay 50 million well for me to reach the same amount of people as an advertisement with personal selling I'd have to hire a lot of people for me to send people out to talk to 500 million people it would take thousands and thousands and thousands millions of dollars because I have to pay for the manpower now you're like why would people do this if it's the most expensive aren't salesmen kind of outdated and not really because they're also the most effective form of promotion they're the most effective form of promotion because i think it's harder to say no to a person than it is to say no to a billboard I also think that they can react differently by actually trying to fulfill your needs and wants. If you're like, I don't like it because of this, they have the chance to respond and make it better. Okay, does that make sense? Now, these four things used together, trying to inform, persuade, and remind people are what's known as the promotional mix. As you do different activities for your company, you can create a promotional plan. So I might say for the school store, I wanna boost sales by 10%, the promotional plan. There's my objective, right? In order to boost sales by 10%, I'm going to create a sales promotion and an advertisement, and I'm gonna put it on social media. And I could choose to do that. Now, another part of an actual promotional plan is setting a budget. A promotional budget is usually decided by a percent of projected sales. Put that in your notes. Promotional budgets are decided by a percent of expected or anticipated sales. Now, a common one that you'll probably see is 2% of anticipated sales. However, that doesn't mean that that's what everybody does. Some people like to spend a lot on promotion. 
Some people don't like to spend any and they just say, eh, like our name and our public relations, we'll make it all work. But a promotional plan is how you tie all of these things together with an actual goal in mind and with a budget and with what we like to call a schedule of activities. Let me erase this super fast. So a schedule of activities, as you'll probably see in the terms that I sent you, is the idea that you actually can create a calendar for your promotion. In a promotional plan, I want to make sure that I'm not doing too much or too little all the time. So a promotional schedule of activities might look something like this. And I'm like, I want to post every Wednesday and boost it for two days. And so I'm going to have social media and I'm going to have it right here. And my schedule of activities would actually show that I do social media here and social media here and social media here. And I might say that I want to do a billboard for the entire month. And so I'm going to write billboard and it's going to go all the way across. And you can think of it as just a calendar to show what kind of activities you're actually doing. In order to make sure that you're succeeding, you want to make sure that you're always putting promotion in front of people and you're not like overdoing it or underdoing it. Now, another key thing that I want to tell you guys too, promotion has to focus on your target market. If you're using a kind of promotion that your target market never looks at, you're wasting your money and your time. You're always, always, always focusing on your target market. Okay, we're going to move on to something a little bit different in the fact that we're going to talk about, I apologize, I got to find it. We're going to talk about a couple different things now. One is visual merchandising. Okay, sorry, we just went all through all of that. Pause, you can take a break, you can pause me, you can do whatever. Or if you're ready to go on, let's talk about visual merchandising. Visual merchandising is pretty much the presentation of an entire store. Oh, got close. This includes displays, this includes the storefront, this includes um, like things like signage that you have up, it could include fixtures, it could include displays, whether they're closed or open. It's pretty much just how everything flows visually together. Now you've probably noticed while you've walked around and shopped different places, Visually pleasing stores probably are going to make more money. If it looks like you're all thrown together, all like heebie-jeebie and it doesn't ever work, then you're probably not going to have people buy it because they don't even know what you have. Um, an example of this. So I recently went to Game Grid here in North Ogden, and they recently moved and had this whole big slat wall of stuff. Their visual merchandising looked way different than it had before. And I was like, bro, I've been looking for this for so long. And he's like, we always had it. It was just tucked behind stuff. They lost sales based on me not knowing that it was there. And so their new visual merchandising or how their store looks was succeeding. Now, in here, there's a couple different things that you're going to want in your notes. Make sure that you have them because they're on the Nearpod. But store image, storefront, store interior, store layout, and interior displays are things that i want you to have now in there it probably asks you about a planogram and you watched a movie and a planogram is the idea that you want to make sure that your store is always working and functioning to the best of its abilities so you might say i have a register here and i want people to line up through here the idea of a planogram is that you could draw and say i want these kinds of merchandise here so that they can shop on either side I want merchandise right in front of my cash wrap. I want things right here to make it so that they can shop around the outside, but they're still visible for me to see uh, security wise. Planograms are pretty much a roadmap to success. 
in order to make it so that my store is functional, but still makes it look good, you create a planogram. Oftentimes, uh, like stores that don't have people that are very good at merchandising will draw out planograms all the time because they want things done a certain way. And they know if they don't, that it'll look crappy. So they're like, make sure that you place this here. Um, I hope that all makes sense. If you need help understanding it, let me know. Uh, let me make sure that I got everything for, oh, chapter six. There's one more thing that I want to talk about. Um, special events are things that we talk about as well. This is like the other kinds of promotion. Things that I want you to for sure know about is that uh, seminars, what they are, it's pretty much, they just have people coming and talking about things so that you can understand them a little bit better. One that I really love and one that works are private sales. Private sales are the idea that you could invite someone to your actual store and say, hey, this is a sale just for our best customers. Come shop, come enjoy the night and come buy things that someone might not always get. Uh, one example of this, and I have a cousin that actually manages Bohm uh, in a couple of different locations, but uh, she manages Bohm and she always uh, posts about something called Girls Night Out. And Girls Night Out is this night where you just come and you get a drink and the store is closed to everybody but those people invited and you get to shop the new fashion for that season. And you enjoy it. You go, you have a good time. You don't have to fight the lines. You don't have to do different things like that. But you're invited to come just look at it. I've asked her before how those go and she's like, they're the best nights of the year. We sell more then because people know that they're special to us. Private sales is something that we might want to think about in the school store. Are there ways that we can implement this for some of our best customers? Are there ways that we can use this to let people design different kinds of merchandise on our website? Who knows? It's just a thought. But I hope that this gets you thinking a little bit. Now, one of the things that I want to talk to you guys about is your assignment. In chapter six, you're actually going to create a promotional plan or just one kind of sales promotion is actually more what it is. But I want you to create a sales promotion for the school store. Now, one thing to remember is we still have to make money. And so you have to make sure that it's profitable. But I want you to have some fun. Figure out a way that you think we can draw more people to the school store and be successful. For those of you that are at home, in order to present this, I want you to make a 90 second to five minute video. This will allow people in the school to actually vote on your ideas and see if we can make it so that the school store is more productive this year. If you have questions on the assignment, please let me know. But I hope the stuff that we've talked about today makes sense. If you need help, let me know. Now, something to really remember, please, please, please make sure that you're doing the Nearpods. There is a test in the next couple weeks that will be on the yellow book stuff. Yes, we're going to do a review. Yes, I've lectured on stuff, but there are things that you're going to have to get from the book. Please, please, please do not put that off. I promise it will be worth your time. Hope you're having a good day. Stay in your out, guys.